in the last stream, we were working on finally getting all of the remaining resources that we're going to need in order to make 24 ultimate singularities. Basically, the final item in this mod pack is the creative vending upgrade. Once we have the creative vending upgrade, as it says in the tooltip here, we have unlimited item withdrawal, which basically means that we can get an unlimited amount of any item that we already have at least one of going forward, right? Basically gives us creative mode, uh, the ability to double or infinitely duplicate any item that we have. So to make this, we need a bunch of creative storage upgrades, a couple of tier five storage upgrades, but most importantly, of course, we need 24 ultimate singularities. These are made from 17 component singularities, and each one of these is made from 10,000 of a given resource with an ultimate catalyst. So we need to have at least 240,000 of every single item listed here. And I believe that we are now at that point. In the last stream, we worked on getting bronze bees. We now have over 240,000 bronze. Uh, we did nickel. We've got 307,000 nickel. We did silver. We got 341,000 silver. We did electrum. We got 383,000 electrum. And we did aluminum. And now we have 422,000 aluminum. So we should have, I believe, more than 240,000 of every single one of these resources. And so what I think we will do real quick here is we will teach our system how to make the quantum compressor. And then we'll see about making maybe like 16 quantum compressors, because of course we do already have all of the redstone singularities we need. We made all those before. We've got 24 of those ready to go. So we only need to make the other 16 singularities. So if we can get 15 or more quantum compressors, we can get all of those going at the same time. And hopefully we'll be able to make this creative vending upgrade here uh, sooner rather than later. So uh, let's teach our system real quick how to make the elite components as well as the elite catalyst. Let's also do the black iron frame here. And I think that's about everything. Um, our system, I believe, does know how to make the black iron slit. It does. Um, one thing that we don't have a lot of, or that our system doesn't really know how to make at the moment, is, of course, glass. And so one of the things that we should probably do, and one of the things that we should probably have done a long time ago here. Also, it looks like we might need a couple more crafters, although at this point in time, chat, we know we're not going to need any more apiaries. So we could take those out and just put these in like so and store those away for now. Um, but what we should have done a while ago is probably uh, snag this material stoneworks factory, snag a storage drawer. And uh, once again, we'll just kind of hide this back here and set it to make glass. So we have a, a passive supply coming in. Something like this, where we have cobble being turned into gravel, into sand, into glass, and exported. We had a system like this before, but now that is reset up once again. And just to kickstart our system here, because I know we are going to need a bunch of glass if we're going to request uh, 16 of these quantum compressors, we can throw some sand into the ultimate smelting factory there real quick. Um, other than that, though, do we have everything we need to make 16, oh, sorry, 15 more of these? We almost do. We're missing 14 black iron ingots, which is actually fine. The reason we're missing some black iron ingots there is, of course, because down here, our uh, black iron ingot drawer is currently set to only hold so many. You'll see we do actually have another 64 available that's not accessible by our refined storage system. And so uh, if we just go ahead and throw those into um, a disk drive here, that uh, should allow us to complete the craft and request 16 of these quantum, oh, sorry, 15 of these quantum compressors start and start and hopefully those won't take too long either now in terms of where we're going to set this up i think i might just put them back here now of course if we're going to have 16 quantum compressors we are going to want to have 16 exporters which our system currently doesn't know how to make but we should be able to teach fairly easily boom and boom uh, it might also not know how to make the cabling here, so we'll also teach it that. Uh, as per usual, I will make sure that I swap out the dark glass there for regular glass, re-encode. And at that point, we should be basically good to go. Now, um, I think we did, if I'm not mistaken, teach our system how to make uh, stack and speed upgrades. It looks like we didn't teach it how to make stack upgrades, but we did teach it how to make speed upgrades. Okay, in that case then, let's have a quick look and see if we can't teach it how to make stack upgrades. Encode. Uh, we'll throw that down over in here. 
Once again, we will take out uh, some of these other patterns that we know we're not going to use going forward. And let's have a look. Do we have what it takes to request 16 exporters? We do. And do we have what it takes to request 64 speed upgrades? And we'll do 60 because we already have four start and start. Yeah, it looks like we have all of that. Beautiful. So once all that is done, and let's quickly check on those quantum compressors. They are coming in slowly but surely. Uh, we can begin throwing these down over uh, at the back here. So we're just waiting on the last couple of speed upgrades here. Uh, but we have all 16 quantum compressors. Uh, we also have some basic universal cable. I don't think these use that much power. So I think doing something like this should maybe give all of these enough juice. Although... I'm not quite sure what's going on with the, the visuals there. That might be a glitch, but also it's quite possible. Yeah, that looks like a visual glitch. The number is going up. Once we start actually making the singularities, if we're not providing enough power to these, uh, we can always upgrade the uh, basic universal cable here. It does transfer 3,200 FE per tick, so I'd be surprised if that's not enough, but uh, we will find out momentarily. Uh, while we wait on those last few speed upgrades, um, I guess we should actually begin getting all the resources out, right? So aluminum, bronze, coal, copper, diamond. Aluminum, bronze, coal, copper, ingots, and diamonds. Someone did ask an interesting question, and that is whether or not we can put in blocks. I will try that real quick. Um, for example, if we put a copper ingot in here, and of course we are going to need uh, an ultimate catalyst to do this. If we do this, that gets taken in. If I put a block in there, unfortunately that doesn't work, so we do have to export the ingots, which is going to take slightly longer, but should be fine. And of course what we want to do is not actually put the ingots into the compressor, we want to put them into the exporter. So you want to do copper, aluminum, coal, and diamonds, and also bronze and then we basically just need to repeat that process for every one of the uh, the other singularities and not too long later we now have 64 speed upgrades and all of our quantum compressors here are almost fully set up all of the exporters have their respective items in them and uh, we just need to make 15 more ultimate catalysts and uh, to do that we should probably teach our system how to make the ultimate catalysts here which hopefully shouldn't be too difficult and we're also probably going to have to teach it this guy as well, but that is also fine. And now we have run into one slight problem. And that slight problem is that we don't have enough lead. So what we're probably going to have to do, just as soon as we request 15 more of these, is we're going to have to look at getting some more lead bees. And I think we should look at uh, filling... Uh, putting lead bees into all four apiaries to try and maximize the uh, the speed at which we can get lead, right? Uh, because we do have about 100,000 lead, so we do need another, another 140,000. Whether or not we can get 140,000 within a reasonable amount of time is uh, yet to be seen, but we can give it a go. Okay, so not too long lead. So we now have lead bees in every single one of the uh, four tier four apiaries that we have here. And so hopefully... We're going to start getting lead quite quickly. Whether or not we can get the lead fast enough to where we make the creative vending upgrade today is going to be a different question. But over here, we should now have uh, all of the ultimate catalysts we need. And so if we go and uh, put these in, uh, we should hopefully be able to get this uh, ball rolling. So once all of those uh, catalysts are in, let's grab some cable and then just try and connect that up. I guess we'll do something like this. Boom, and that should start exporting. So we're gonna start producing all of the singularities. From there, we should also, of course, grab all of the speed upgrades. Uh, we would like to make 16 stack upgrades if we can, uh, or should I say 15 more than what we currently have. So uh, 10 and 15, start and start. And that is gonna use 60 of the 64 speed upgrades, which should be fine. Uh, we need to request another 60 of these. Uh, that's not actually quite true. Uh, we would need to request another 41 of these, I think, uh, because I'm pretty sure 45 is what we need if we're going to put three in each of the 15. Although we have 16, so make that uh, 48. Either way, stack, upgrades. Let's get all these in as well to start speeding this up ever so slightly. So now all of these have stack upgrades. Let's do the same with speed upgrades. The speed upgrades are still coming in uh, slowly but surely. They're still being crafted 
by the system. But uh, as they start to come in, we can, of course, start to produce these uh, much, much faster, like we did with the redstone. Okay, so now all of these have one stack and three speed upgrades. So we're now making all of the 15 uh, other singularities, or sorry, 16 other singularities that are not redstone as fast as we can. It is going to take a little while for these two uh, to finish up here, but that is fine. Uh, hopefully, in the time it takes those to finish up, we will get a decent amount of lead from our lead bees. Whether or not we get enough to actually make 24 lead singularities is still to be seen, but in the meantime, chat, there are a few other things uh, that we need to take care of. One of those things is Batania. We did a bit of Batania work in the last stream. We set up the Alpine portal, and we got our first bit of Terra Steel. And if we're going to complete this quest here, the Everlasting Guilty Pool, which is a creative mana pool from Batania, um, we need to fight the Gaia, because we need the uh, five Gaia Spirit ingots. These are acquired by crafting four Gaia Spirits with a Terra Steel ingot, and you get the Gaia Spirits by fighting the Gaia. So if we take our Lexica Batania, and we quickly throw it through the portal, we should get back and upgraded Lexica Batania. We did. And in here, if we go ahead and type in Gaia, we have the section for the ritual of the Gaia. And if we had another few pages, we have to set up this structure right here, which I believe is eight blocks of iron, one beacon, and four Gaia pylons. We can right click onto the beacon with a Terra Steel ingot, and that will trigger the Gaia fight, which I think shouldn't be too difficult for us. Okay, so quick side tangent, because it turns out that we also don't have enough coal. And unlike lead, we actually don't have enough coal by a long shot. Um, I think we had like 30,000 coal out of the 240,000 that we needed. So thankfully the coal bees are craftable. It's one of these uh, starting recipes. So getting coal bees into all four apiaries is gonna be a lot easier than it was with the lead. Okay, so things might be okay, actually. We've put coal bees into all four apiaries, much like we did with the lead bees. Now, with the lead bees, each uh, lead honeycomb block gets you nine lead, whereas with the coal bee, each block of coal honeycomb gets you 144 coal. And as a reminder, because we have a tier four apiary, we get eight coal blocks every single pollination cycle. And so we should hopefully, we should probably actually um, be able to get all of the coal singularities before we get the lead singularity, just because we're getting so much more coal per cycle. Either way, back over here, what we were working on was getting the Gaia pylons, which we should be able to do. Uh, we are going to have to get uh, four elementium and four pixie dust. As luck would have it, that's not going to be too difficult for us to do. Uh, we are going to have to get two more mana steel, which is two iron, and we're going to have to get four mana pearls which we can do with four ender pearls. One, two, three, four. So let's just drop those in over here. One, two, and one, two, three, four. And uh, the reason we need eight mana steel, of course, because this is a two to one recipe. So it's two mana steel per one elementium. Whereas uh, this is a one to one recipe. So where uh, one mana pearl gets you one pixie dust. Once we have all of those, we should then be able to craft up the Gaia pylons, although I have miscalculated here because of course we need uh, four Gaia pylons, not two. Boom, and boom, and there we go. We have all four Gaia pylons. Beautiful, let's clear our inventory just a little bit here. And uh, we are going to look at hopefully using this advanced storage housing as well today to make the infinite storage disk, but we will come back to that one in a second. For now, let's grab the nine iron blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, let's also make a beacon. Boom and boom. And I think that should be basically everything. Now, um, before we go to actually fight the Gaia, one thing that I think we should invest in is a Wither Charm. And by invest in, I mean we should use the one that we made previously uh, to fight the Wither. Let's go ahead and stick that into our Charm slot. We will take off the Sleep Charm for now. Uh, we should also make sure that our Meat Feeder is fairly full. It is, but I'll fill it up to max capacity just in case. We shouldn't really have too much of a problem here. I think given our the power of our armor and the power of our mecha tool, which will hopefully deal its correct amount of damage to the Gaia, unlike the, uh, the end dragon before it, I think we should be fine, especially given that we can't get the wither effect if we have the wither charm. So essentially what I'm thinking here, chat, is that uh, if we head on over to the area that we found chickens, which is a big old grass platform that's all the way out 
over here. This might need to be a bit bigger, so we might have to go get our wand in a second, uh, because the area that you fight the guy in does need to be quite large. So if we do something like this, uh, the area for this ritual does need to be quite large. If we open up the Lexica Britannia, there is a little visualize button. Um, unfortunately, you have to have like ground access to visualize. So real quick, what I might do is just kind of break this, break this, and then uh, right click the visualization here. That should tell us exactly where these pylons need to go. One, two, three, and four. And uh, we'll then get rid of the dirt here. I don't know if you quite have to get rid of these uh, pillars, but um, the area around the ritual, for lack of a better term, does need to be clear. Uh, then we'll put down the iron and the beacon, and this is fully done. So now to activate this, we do need to get one more terra steel, which I think we should be able to do fairly easily. It looks like we have more than enough mana in our mana pools. We just need a mana diamond and a mana pearl. Boom and boom. Once again, drop all three of those over here. One, two, and three. And there we go. Another terra steel. And so if we do a quick slash back, I think if we were to try and right click this now, it would tell us that uh, the area is not big enough. You'll see that we have to fill in this area over here, which is why I've brought all of this dirt and my building on. So if we just quickly do something a little bit like this and make sure this is set to the no restrictions mode, we can do something like this. And at that point, I think, Chet, that we are ready to shift right click with the Terra Steel and begin the fight. So the good news is that it does appear that my mecha tool is dealing the correct amount of damage here to this Gaia spirit. Uh, you'll also see that the armor is doing a tremendous job at not dealing, or uh, not receiving too much damage here, which is perfect. And uh, we're obviously being helped along by our, by our meat feeder and by our extra hearts. So this is kind of phase two. He's going to drop another, like a horde of mobs here. Again, we should be able to uh, basically one hit kill all of these with our 32 damage mecha tool. And I'm pretty sure that once this uh, portion of the fight is over, he will uh, come back down after all these mobs have been killed. And we should be able to finish him off, I think, fairly easily. And there we go. It's just that easy. That gets us eight Gaia spirits, um, which of course alone is not enough to make the everlasting guilty pool. We are going to have to have, uh, how many of these here? Five. We are going to have to have 20 in order to, uh, to make all the ingots. But again, once we have the uh, creative vending upgrade, we should be able to turn the eight that we have into infinite and from there make the actual uh, guilty pool. So let's do a quick slash home. And let's take a look at how we're doing over here. So we're almost halfway there. We have 10 of almost all of the singularities. Of course, coal and lead are probably lagging up behind a little bit. And you'll see we've actually run out of lead here at the, uh, at the nine mark, which is not great. All right, so it is a new day. Uh, it's a day later. I was really hoping we could finish the pack yesterday. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough coal and we didn't have enough lead, but the bees have been hard at work between streams, producing more coal and more lead to where now we are very close to having all of the singularities that we need. We just need 500 more coal and we should be there. We've got 22 coal singularities in the quantum compressor and we have a further two coal singularities in here. And then each of the other quantum compressors has now finished. You'll see we have 24 
of all of the other singularities that we need. Uh, the diamond one went on for a little too long. We got 30 diamond ones, but that is fine. In fact, let's go ahead and start taking all of these out. Uh, just as soon as this is done, uh, the coal will be done as well. So we can take that out and stop the uh, quantum compressor eating up any more of our coal. But uh, we should now finally have everything that we need to make the creative vending upgrade, thus giving us the ability to make an infinite amount of any item that we want. And there we go. Boom. 24 core singularities. So if we take these down to our extreme crafting table, that being this guy over here, our ultimate crafting table, um, I don't know if we can shift click this recipe in. We can, but we're missing the redstone singularities, of course. Those are in the system. Boom. And we'll take the first one here. In fact, we can just take all of them. Yeah, there's 24 ultimate singularities. Now, people have been a little confused in both the Twitch chat and the YouTube comments, wondering why I keep saying 24 ultimate singularities when instead people recommend I get 25 so that we can duplicate it once we have the creative vending upgrade, right? They recommend keeping an extra one so that once we have the creative vending upgrade, we can use that on a draw with the ultimate singularity and thus have unlimited ultimate singularities. However, it turns out there is a little bit of a workaround here because what you can do is if you grab a storage drawer and you place it down like so, we can put in the ultimate singularities, lock the drawer to ultimate singularities like so, take the eight out. And now, even though there are no ultimate singularities in this drawer, once we get the creative vending upgrade, we can put that into this drawer and we will have unlimited ultimate singularities. We don't need the extra unlimited singularity to make that happen. And we can actually do the exact same thing with the creative vending upgrade itself. Once we get the creative vending upgrade, we can put it into a storage drawer as an item, not as an upgrade. We can then take lock it, take it out, apply it as an upgrade, and then we have an unlimited number of creative vending upgrades as well. So if we're actually gonna make it, we do need to get a bunch of these uh, near infinite storage upgrades. How many of these do we need? It's uh, 9, 18, plus 16. So let's go ahead and request 40 of these guys. Start and start. That might take a little bit of time to complete. I think, honestly, the slowest part is just going to be the uh, filling in of the, the ultimate crafting table here. The actual crafting of these upgrades really doesn't take all that long whatsoever. And so given that that is probably almost done, let's also go ahead and request all of the tier five upgrades as well. Here we need five, 10, 16 of the emerald upgrades. So those are done. And yeah, now we're just gonna have to wait for this guy to slowly but surely produce all these. And in fact, uh, we can go ahead, I guess, and just start taking these out manually to, uh, to speed up the, the crafting. And 40 creative storage upgrades later, and I believe that we are pretty much good to go. The only thing that we're missing is an upgrade template. Start and start. That is done. Boom and boom. And look at that. We have the creative vending upgrade. Now, we do have to be extremely careful with this, or at least somewhat careful, because if you put this into a draw, I believe much like the regular creative upgrade, the one that we have right here, once it's in, you can't take it out. So what we're going to have to do here is grab a hopper and use the hopper to put the item into the drawer as an item and not as an upgrade. If you just try and right click the creative vending upgrade onto the drawer like you would with any other item uh, that you would try to put in there, it will put it in as an upgrade, not as an item. So you want to do something like this. Make sure it's in. Lock the drawer with the key like so. Take it out. You'll see right now, if we hold shift, there is nothing in there right at the top. It shows no items. Now, if we put the creative vending upgrade in and we hold shift, we have 2G, which is 2 billion creative vending upgrades. And for all intents and purposes, we have an unlimited number of creative vending upgrades. We can take out as many of these as we like. We can put one in over here. We have 2G ultimate singularities. If we head on down here, we can start filling in all of these with creative vending upgrades. And we are going to have an infinite amount of every single item on this wall. So now if we uh, check out our system, uh, you'll see that we have uh, 
Infinite, which is just over 2 billion. Uh, that number there, 2,147,483,647, I believe is the maximum uh, 32-bit integer. So that's kind of the number uh, that Minecraft caps out at here. But you'll see that we have 2 billion of every single item. And uh, if we were to take some logs out, uh, it still stays at that 2 billion number. So we do actually have an infinite number of any item that we like. And so um, at this point, I want to try and complete some of these uh, final quests. And uh, if we're going to do that, we are going to have to unlock this quest here for the creative tab. You'll see right now it's actually not unlocked, despite the fact uh, that we have made two of the items on this page here. So uh, if we're going to unlock that, we are going to have to get some of the catalysts just to uh, register them as being completed for the, the quest book's sake. And for that, we are going to have to get some uh, black iron slates. Going forward, of course, what we can do now is we can just request uh, an infinite number of draws. Uh, ideally, we probably want to have two by two draws if we can... Uh, manage them because these we can obviously uh, get unlimited of four items as opposed to unlimited of uh, of one item so let's quickly request a bunch of chests and a bunch of oak planks and then what we should probably do is uh, go ahead and throw down these into like one of these drawers here like put you in there give that infinite chests and then you know we can put planks in here infinite planks beautiful and then uh, actually i guess we could do the same thing with these right we put these in uh, let's say here and boom now we have infinite two by two drawers and then we can just take those out and we can begin putting these down, let's say, on the back here. Something like this. Oh, oh, this is full of logs. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. So the the draw that I put into the two by the draw, the two by two draw that I put into the frame compacting draw already had items in it. So I've just made two billion draws that are full of Exactly, 238 logs, 493 sticks, 63 saplings, and 512 apples. What a bizarre system. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I can undo that because like this has an infinite number of those items now. Um, so I guess instead, let's go ahead and grab like a, a fresh regular draw, which is this one, I believe. Then let's grab like a fresh regular two by two draw. Then we can put that down, then put the two by two draw in there, then give it the ultimate upgrade. Then we have infinite two by two drawers, which we can also fill with creative vending upgrades. And so now if we ever need an infinite number of any given item, we can just put the one of those items into these drawers and we will have an infinite number of them. So let's grab, for example, the uh, black iron slate that we just made. We can throw that in uh, over here. From there, if we are wanting to make the components, we should be able to do this. And then we should also be able to do something like this. Uh, that's these quests complete. From there, we do want to get the catalysts. So you know what? Let's just do a quick one of these and one of these. And then we should be able to make the elite catalyst and the ultimate catalyst. And then that should unlock the ultimate and elite crafting tables, which are going to be doable, but are going to be a pain in the backside to make here. Okay, and there we go. So that should be those quests complete. It is. Now we can go ahead and take that. And now we have unlocked the creative quest line. We have the creative vending upgrade. I will go ahead and request another creative storage upgrade. Start and start. That shouldn't take too long once again. Uh, and then on this last page here, we also have the everlasting guilty pool and the creative energy cube. So of course, in terms of ultimate singularities, we have as many of those as we like up here. Um, I believe our system does know how to make all of the energy cubes. So let's go ahead and request one of each here. Of course, then we can put them into the uh, the storage drawers and we'll have infinite of them. And then we should be able to make the creative energy cube. And then as for the everlasting guilty pool, we need some fabulous mana pools, which are made from shimmer rock, which we can make with living rock and uh, the bifrost block. Uh, this is made with a rod of the bifrost and elf glass. Elf glass is mana glass through the elven portal. So the rod of the bifrost actually isn't too difficult for us to make. Uh, we can make that with some Elementium, some Pixie Dust, and a Dragonstone. A Dragonstone is a Mana Diamond through the Elven Portal. So let's quickly go ahead and grab at least one Mana Diamond with two Mana Pearls, which apparently we don't have, but we can make. And then we'll also grab some Iron so we can make some Mana Steel. And then, by extension, some Elementium. Mana Diamond, Mana Pearl, and Mana Steel. Then we can get the Bifrost. Boom and boom. Uh, from there, let's quickly grab some glass. We do have two billion now, so we might as well uh, make a little bit of mana glass. We don't quite need this much, but we'll also go ahead and make some 
elf glass. From there, we should be able to make the fabulous mana pool. Again, thankfully, we just need the one. And so, in fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and take one of these mana pools here. Oh, dog crash. Thank you. One of these mana pools here. We are going to need quite a few of these. So we'll drop this guy in over here somewhere. To do that, we are going to have to get a few more draws. But uh, as luck would have it, we do have two billion. Boom. Boom. So we'll make one, two, three, four, five Bifrost blocks with our Elf Glass and our Rod of the Bifrost. From there, we can then combine that up with the Mana Pool to make the Fabulous Mana Pool. And then we can put that into here. We now have unlimited Fabulous Mana Pools. What else are we missing? So we've got the regular Mana Pools. We've got the Fabulous Mana Pools. Do we have one Living Rock? We do not. So we are going to have to put down at least one stone over by the old uh, Pure Deze. That is completely fine. We'll leave you there. Uh, we do also need to get uh, a few mana tablets that are full of mana. Uh, that could prove somewhat difficult, although I think we actually have uh, what it takes here to fill them up. And in fact, once we have one full mana pool, we can probably duplicate it, much like we did with that storage draw that had logs in it. Let's just make sure the mana is going into the tablet and not into the pool. All right, let's give this a try, shall we? If I put this into here, do we have an infinite number of full mana pools? We do. Beautiful. Okay, let me clear my inventory out just a little bit. Uh, let's also go and see if that living rock isn't also done. It is beautiful. We'll also go ahead and throw this in here as well. Uh, then let's go ahead and take a few of these so we can actually start putting them into the crafting table, which is actually down here. Uh, we also need to get the Gaia ingot. We did fight the Gaia, so we'll go ahead and do that. We are going to have to make one more terror steel. That is fine. Let's just quickly do that. Uh, terra steel wise we need a mana diamond we might as well go and do something like this uh, we also need a mana pearl which currently we don't have we also don't have any mana steel we should uh, probably get those in these uh, creative drawers as well and gosh my inventory is getting so messy now that we have <laughs> an infinite number of every single item one and two and infinite and infinite beautiful we'll take those those and those we do need them all for the uh for the final craft anyway over here let's do one two and three that's one terra steel and you know the drill over here that is infinite terra steel from there we can make one Gaia Spirit ingot, and boom, we have infinite Gaia Spirit ingots. And I think, chat, that's everything for this mana pool. It is. Beautiful. So now we can, of course, put this down if we want over by our other mana pools. And, uh, and in fact, actually, if we wanted to, we could even go ahead and put it into here. Boom. And boom. And now we have an unlimited number of everlasting infinite creative mode mana pools. We'll put one down. Sure, that's fine. Why not? Um, and yeah, at that point, we're just missing the creative energy cube. So let's have a look over here. Energy cube. We have one of each. Let's clear out all the Batania stuff now. We don't need it. We'll put one of each of those over here. Uh, let's quickly grab a fresh two by two draw first. So ultimate basic elite and advanced good stuff uh, what do we need for the actual cube itself uh, we just need a bunch of all of these so these stack of course they don't <laughs> that would have been far too easy uh, for the most part they're all ultimate here so we need 40 ultimate around the edge uh, we then need i think it's 16 elite eight advanced and one basic beautiful chat we have infinite energy we have a creative energy cube uh, in fact we could if we wanted to and i feel like we should just for the uh the sake of it here we could grab one of the ultimate induction cells of course drop that into one of our new creative drawers which are slowly but surely filling up uh, with trash because whenever i put something back it's going into these drawers and not all the other drawers which i guess is kind of fine but it does mean we now have an infinite mana glass which is maybe a little less than useful but uh, let's go ahead and grab 
a few stacks of these ultimate induction cells. Uh, if we also grab our wand, I believe we should be able to fill up our induction matrix here with the maximum number of ultimate induction cells for the maximum possible energy storage cell. We are pretty much there. Let's grab another couple of stacks, fill in you, fill in you, and fill in you. And then if we quickly uh, escape here, we should be able to fill in those last few blocks. And I believe this is almost the maximum capacity. Of course, we did use a couple of uh, squares for the induction providers, but uh, if we right click here, this is not registering. Oh, of course, over here, that's my bad. And so we now have a capacity of 5.39 PFE, which I believe is 5.39 quintillion redstone flux, a staggering amount of redstone flux storage. And so that is the creative chapter and the final chapter of Skybees complete. Uh, there are quests that we have yet to do, and there are quest lines that we haven't even touched on. Um, we're not going to complete the Applied Energistics quest line, uh, because Applied Energistics, whilst a very good mod, is very similar to Refined Storage, and uh, for the most part, it's used in the exact same way. Um, I do want to make the Infinite Disk. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, we probably also won't do the RF Tools quest line. A very good mod as well. RF Tools, it, I find it to be a little weirdly placed in this mod pack. Um, it adds some really cool stuff, but a lot of the stuff that, uh, that RF Tools adds isn't really useful this late on in the mod pack. Like, it adds core crafters, but the crafters are not very useful once you have refined storage. Um, it adds the storage scanner, which is also a cool item, but again, it's kind of useless once you have refined storage. Uh, the wireless power, again, not very useful once you have flux networks. And the builder, which can act as a quarry, this quarry card quest down here, are also not really useful when you have, you know, tier four APRs that can produce a staggering number of resources in a surprisingly small period of time. So uh, I would have liked to have seen this quest line a bit higher. Um, I understand that they wanted to get things off by using the uh, RF Tools machine casing, but it just seems like a little bit of a weird choice. As for that infinite storage disk, infinite storage disk, I don't think this should be, it looks crazy, but I'm hoping it's not gonna be too difficult. Uh, do we have a 1K storage part? Of course we don't, that would have been too easy. Okay, so if we're gonna make a 1K storage part, we need four quartz enriched iron, three redstone dust, and an improved processor. So I'm a little, I don't think any of my crafting is gonna work. Oh, it did work, okay, cool. So some of my crafting works, which is nice. I was a little worried because the uh, external storage over there is kind of messing up just a little bit. Uh, do we have any honey in here? We do not. That is fine. We do have a few billion millibuckets of honey over here. So let's drop you down there. Once again, grab the uh, trusty old fluid uh, cable from Cyclic. Boom and boom. We'll then do the quartz in which iron, the redstone, and I think it was the vibrant glass is usually what it requires. No vibrant glass. Quartz in which iron, redstone, processor, and I think it was this. It is beautiful. Once we have one 1K storage part, you know the drill here, let's put one in here. And I'm hoping making some of these other parts here should be fairly easy. Okay, before we go any further, we should make sure we have a, an unlimited number of basic processes. Uh, let's also just get a few more drawers down here real quick and uh, make sure these are all cheat drawers. Beautiful. Uh, so you are already done. We didn't need to do that again, but that's fine. Uh, we now have an infinite number of those. And again, they should be connected up to the system, so that should be fine. So 4K goes in here into 16K. Now again, now we have to make sure we have an infinite number of these processors. So I'll take you, and I think there's actually a processor that we're missing. I think there's like a wither tier processor that we're gonna have to get in a second here. But for now, let's do 16K. As well as 64K. Don't forget the, uh, the most important part chat. 64K and unlimited. It then goes up to 256K, I think. Yes. Then 1024K. Then 
4096k. That then goes in to 16384k, which then goes into, I believe, 64 or 65536k. Recipe size too large. Oh, of course. That needs to be in here. Boom. Then there is, I think, maybe 262M. And this is where we need the withering processor. So this requires a raw withering processor with redstone dust and printed silicon. The raw withering processor actually uh, fairly easy for us to make. Just to be safe, I will do that, even though we have more than enough nether uh, stars to make that work. Uh, we can put you in there. Try and steal that out nice and quickly. And then, of course, we'll throw this in over here as well. And I think at that point, we do have everything uh, that we need to make basically all of these. So 262M in here followed by 1048M in here, followed by nothing. And that's it. The 1048M is the final version. And you can imagine if you tried to craft that normally, you need like all of those tiers for every single one of those 1048M storage parts. This is an insane recipe. It's less insane once you have all, of, like once you have the creative upgrade, of course, it's a fairly easy recipe. But uh, trying to do this before you have an infinite number of every single item is basically impossible thankfully we do have an infinite number of every single item and so all we need to do here is get uh four 4k storage parts head on over to the empty recipe slot oh we need to put in two of these real quick just to finish this craft there we go boom boom we can actually make a few uh, infinite storage upgrades which is uh somewhat paradoxical but you know what sure why not we could take uh, another one of those we do have the uh, storage housing and so we can make infinite of those. And then from there, we can start to make the infinite storage disk. And then from there, of course, we have infinite, infinite storage disks. And uh, I don't actually know if you can put more than one infinite, infinite storage disk into the uh, the drive here. At the moment, we can hold 28,000 items in our disk drive. And if we do one of these, uh, we can now hold as many items as we like. Can I put uh, more than one in? I can. Look at that. We've got uh, multiple backup infinites just in case infinite wasn't enough all right so there are still quests here that we've yet to complete um but honestly most of these are just crafting like you know we can make a kinetic dynamo it's uh it's just copper you know it's, it's easy enough for us to do but it's just going to be manually crafting this stuff uh, and any item that we don't have it's just going to be getting one of it making infinite of it and then crafting it so i don't really see much point in uh in doing any of that so i think that's probably where we're going to wrap up the um the progress portion of the uh, of the pack. I think we've done most of uh, everything in here. Um, I would like to make a dagger of sacrifice real quick just to complete that blood magic quest line. I did tell somebody a little while back that I would actually do that and then never did. So here we go. Someone pointed out that we were so close to finishing that blood magic quest line. All we have to do is just do this and we're done. So that's that quest complete, I guess. And uh, there are more quests, like I said, that we could complete. Uh, most of them, or quite a lot of them actually, we've already done, like these quests here. Uh, we have already made these. They just didn't register uh, for the system. And like I said, other things like the Fisher and the Mob Crusher there are just blocks that we don't really need. So um, at this point, the uh, one thing that chat is asking is that I nuke the base. So presumably what they mean by that is they want me to make or bring this fission reactor to the core of my base and then intentionally melt it down. Okay, so this is off. I don't believe the fissile fuel is radioactive. We are going to lose a bit of fissile fuel here, but if I'm not mistaken, we should have a good amount of fissile fuel in our quantum entangler porter. Yeah, we do. Okay, cool. So let's take out, let's take this down and let's rebuild it over in the base. Chat is pointing out that we can make this bigger by just getting more casing here, more glass. And then, of course, uh, if we find that free slot, we can also get more uh, more control rod assembly as well. So I'm thinking what we might actually do here, because it looks like we are going to need a ton of fissile fuel if we're going to fill this up. Uh, if we look here, you'll see that we're at uh, a quarter million millibuckets and it's nowhere near full. So I'm thinking what we could potentially do. Um, I don't think we can make like a creative gas tank, uh, but I think what we can do is we can make a regular gas tank which is called a chemical tank. Chat is pointing out that we can upgrade the tank here, so we might as well go with an ultimate 
chemical tank if we can make it work here. Again, I don't know if the uh, request for alloys is going to be fulfilled. Oh, it totally is beautiful. And we do, as luck would have it, have the uh, ultimate chemical tank here. So if we just do something like this and make sure this guy here is set to extract and also make sure that this is set to output gases on all sides. This is now almost full. And so ideally what we can do is we can pick this up. These do retain their gas contents when they're picked up. And then we can place it into, of course, one of our ultimate draws. And then now we have two billion of them. We might as well do the same with the uh, pressurized tubes as well, actually. And then let's just go and take a bunch of these and begin lining them up down here to go into the fission reactor. Okay, so we need to, if we're going to make this explode, we do need to unload our chunks, unclaim the chunks here. Uh, so let's go claim chunks and we need to unclaim every single last one of these so that the uh, nuke can actually deal damage. And Twitch chat is also requesting that I release the bees. I let them free. So I will head on over to my bee area and I will release the bees. Here you go, my friends. You've been trapped for so long, but now you uh, you can roam free for a very small period of time before the nuke goes off. So we don't have this quite full on fissile fuel, but activate. We should see the temperature begin to rise. I'm hoping we have enough fuel in here to keep it going. Oh, it looks like we totally do. It's going very slowly down. Right now, the burn rate is at 0.1 millibuckets. If we bump this up to 1.350, uh, is that what that is? Oh yeah, there we go. Now it's going up a bit faster. Oh, is that 1,300? If I turn it up to just like 100. Oh yeah, there we go. Chant, 30 days of work. Countless hours of bees. That's, a, that's the, the beginning. That's a radiation leak. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. It looks like the reactor didn't explode. It just, uh, it just melted a bit. Unless it's about, to, unless the explosion's coming. It is getting more and more red, <laughs> which I don't love. Like, it's so very red. I, uh, I don't know if there's much more we can do here, Chet. I think it's supposed to explode. Okay, so a little bit of time later. And needless to say, the reactor here was a little underwhelming. We built out the max size reactor, we filled it with cells, we tried to get it to, to explode, but it just kind of melted down a little bit of the reactor just disappeared. Um, eventually we ended up claiming the chunks to kind of stop it from exploding and stop it from breaking blocks until the damage number got super high, like over 500% damage. Then we unclaimed the chunks and this is what happened, but it didn't really destroy the base like I was hoping it would. And so people have recommended that we use something called the mana charge. This guy right here from Batania, it's made with four living wood, four TNT, and one Gaia spirit. So uh, living wood, we can, of course, infinitely duplicate. Sand, we should have, so TNT we can make. And then uh, over here, if we just go ahead and add these to an unlimited draw, we should then be able to, uh, to make one of these. And if we get our Lexica Batania out, you can uh, hold control over any item from Britannia, and it will open up the Lexica Britannia to that page. So the Mana Storm Charge, infusing a Gaia Spirit, which is from the guy we just killed, with some TNT creates a Mana Storm Charge, a type of explosive. In a sense, once ignited with a Mana Burst, the charge will create an unstable Mana Storm Epicenter. This will, over time, spawn supercharged explosive Mana Bursts. Needless to say, only a Maniac would unleash such a destructive force near anything valuable or important. Prepare to face the mighty. So, what I am thinking we do here is I'm thinking we take a mana spreader, which we cannot do with our tool for whatever reason. We'll just break it normally. We, of course, do have an unlimited number of everlasting mana pools now. So over here, once again, let's do something like this. That gives us unlimited spreaders. And we'll also grab our unlimited mana pool. Because I'm thinking of putting a few of these down, maybe. Uh, we should also 
duplicate these as well. Not that I think we're really going to need more than one of these, but given that we can make an unlimited amount of them, I feel like, you know, we might as well. And they do take a little bit of time to kind of warm up. So what I'm thinking here is that maybe we should put down a few of these. Let's say we put down like one here. And then let's say we put down another one, maybe like right here. We'll get rid of all those mobs. We can maybe put a third one down. Let's say right about here. And then we'll put like a fourth one down. Maybe just up here. Sure. And then we'll see how this works. So essentially all I'm thinking with these is you've got to put a mana pool down nearby so that we could send a mana burst to them. And obviously we want to have a mana pool uh, near the uh, the mana pool. Uh, uh, we want to have a mana spreader near the mana pool as well so we can move that mana and it has to be close enough. But I believe as soon as we send out the uh, the first burst, we should begin to see... Oh my goodness, there were so many of them. We should begin to see the true force of the Gaia explosions released upon our world. Okay, so that worked. Uh, we made a pulse mana spreader, which is like a regular mana spreader, but uh, you can activate it with a redstone signal. And so now the uh, the show is beginning. Uh, essentially, it does exactly what it says in the tent. It starts sending out uh, mana bursts. Ideally, though, I do want to begin... I can't take my wood out for whatever reason. I'm not quite sure why, uh, but I want to try and trigger the other ones as well. So they're all going at hopefully a similar-ish time. I'm going to come back to this one because this one's going to be a nightmare with all those mobs around. But uh, if we just do this and then link that up. So here to here with a button. That should shoot the mana over and should, sh should start the explosion there. And uh, that's almost certainly going to delete any chance of us using our refined storage system now. And then this one's already gone. I think it's quite possible that uh, in a minute, one of the bursts from lower down will hit the charge up here and we'll send it, we'll trigger this one as well. But just in case it doesn't, there we go. And there we go. That is what four mana charges. Oh my goodness, the actual, there's a final explosion there as well, geez. That is what five, oh no, the tranquility altar. It's no longer tranquil. But that is what five, four mana charges can do to your base. Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the playthrough and the series. Uh, if you did and you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and uh, subscribe. If you're watching here on Twitch, uh, you can go ahead and hit follow to get notified as soon as I, li as soon as I go live in the future. I'll be back uh, hopefully fairly soon with a brand new mod pack playthrough. Until then, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.